Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. You've learned to know us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. But our best identification is that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Many of you are already familiar with some of these famous products, like Rexall Plenamins, for example. Two of these handy little capsules give you more than your daily minimum requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established. Yes, Rexall Plenamins are a good example of the unvarying quality which enables 10,000 family druggists to tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show. Written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Bay and Phil Harris. <laughs> This morning, there seems to be a little excitement in the Harris household. Phil has gone out to the garage to get his car when suddenly he comes bursting back into the house. Alice, Alice, something terrible has happened. Out of my way. Let me at that phone. Oh, take it easy, Phil. Calm down. What's wrong? My car's been stolen. Call the police. Call the FBI. Get Sam Spade. <laughs> Phil, your car hasn't been stolen. Frankie borrowed it this morning. <laughs> uh huh. Borrowed my new chartreuse Cadillac. <laughs> I've only had it two weeks, and he's borrowed it eight times already. How can that guy be so inconsiderate? How am I supposed to get downtown? Oh, Frankie arranged for your transportation. How? He left you a transfer for the Hollywood bus. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Suppose he wrecks my car. If you ask me, it'll look better in that condition. <laughs> Why on earth did you buy a car with such an awful color scheme? Get who's knocking chartreuse. <laughs> to hear you talk, you'd think you never saw a chartreuse convertible with pale fudge fender. So look, what made you get a chartreuse car? He wanted something to match his shoes. <laughs> he has shoes that color? Why, to hear you talk, you'd think you never saw sharp true shoes with pale fudge tongues. <laughs> Philip, I don't know why you put up with Francis. He does the most awful things. Why, that man doesn't have one redeeming quality. That ain't so. Remley's all right. Everybody has bad points. He just happens to have a higher score than anybody else. <laughs> He's always borrowing your car. He wrecked two of them last year, and, well, it makes me mad. Well, if I don't mind too much, why should it make you mad? Because I can't afford to keep buying you new ones. <laughs> Maybe it'd be cheaper if I bought Frankie a car. Hold it, Luella. <laughs> I ain't gonna have my wife buying some other guy a car. I'll buy him one. <laughs> With what? <laughs> I'll pay for it out of my mad money. <laughs> I'll let him go down and pick out a cheap used car for himself. No, oh, Phil, you know Frankie won't pick out a cheap used car for himself. He'll pick out the best new one on the market. No, he won't. Not the way I'm going to handle it. With my plan, I'll guarantee he'll be the one to suggest a used car. I'll tell him it's for you and that I'm... Wait a minute, I'll get it. Hi, Curly. Well, 
Good morning, Mr. Remley. Nice of you to return my car. Who's returning it? <laughs> I ran out of gas. I came back to get your credit card. <laughs> Remley, you ain't getting no credit card. And furthermore, I want you to stop driving my car, and that's final. That's okay with me. I wouldn't drive it again anyway until you had it repainted. <laughs> that awful chartreuse color is affecting my social life. Frankie, it's a beautiful greenish yellow. Yeah, that's the trouble. It looks like an unripe taxi. <laughs> now, look here, Ron. Every time not... I stop to pick up a girl, she jumps in and yells, Follow that cab! Now, listen, I'm not going to stand... I don't mind that, but the ticking of the meter is making me nervous. Well, I don't care if... What meter? The one I had put in this morning, so it shouldn't be a total loss. <laughs> Gee, Curly, I don't Hello. know. Will you call a cab? I have to go downtown. Excuse me, Curly. I got a customer. Get in, lady. Oh! <laughs> oh, hello, Frank. Oh, Alice. Bill, did you uh, tell him about buying the car? What car? No, honey. I, I haven't had a, I haven't had a chance to tell him that. That I have. You no, know, he just came in. What car? Well, it's a car. You see, uh, I'm going to buy a, a new car for someone very close to me. Oh, gee, Curly, that's sweet of you. I, I don't know what to say, except let's get over to the Cadillac agency and pick one out for me. <laughs> Just a minute, Remley. This car don't happen to be for you. You see, I'm buying the car for, for Alice. Alice? But I'm the one who needs it. Why does she... Oh, well... That's life. Money goes to money. <laughs> Them who has, gets. And Frankie, hmm? you know, you have such excellent taste. I'd appreciate it if, the, if you'll help Phil pick a car for me, will you? Okay, but my heart won't be in it. Oh, thanks, Frankie. Well, I have to run along now. See you later. Fine thing. I need a car myself, and I gotta go help buy one for somebody else. Oh, Frankie, don't feel that way about it. Mm -hmm. Look, I'll tell you what. If there's any money left after buying Alice's car, I'll give it to you, and you can buy one of your own. If there's any money left over, I can have it? Yeah. Now let's go down and pick out a nice new car for Alice. New car? <laughs> I got a better idea. Let's get her a used car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a good used car will be all right. But, um, where can I find um, a reliable used car dealer? I know a guy. <laughs> I figured you would. <laughs> Look, Remley, I got $300 to spend, and I don't want to be gypped. Now, is this guy you know, is he... is he honest? Please, Curly. Oh, thank you not to cast any aspersions on Hot Heat Harrigan. <laughs> hot Heat Harrigan? Is he the guy who used to be with nothing down brown? <laughs> the gentleman. Well, in that case, okay, let's go see him. Come uh, on. I better go see Hot Heap alone, Curly. Why? Well, uh, why? Well, he doesn't like strangers. Being a typical used car salesman, he's shy and reticent. <laughs> Besides, if I go alone, I can get a better price from him. Okay. Now, here's the 300, but remember, Remley, pick out something nice for Alice. Something, well... Something you yourself would like. Now, don't try to save anything. Well, you know me better than that. I'll pick out the best used car they got for Alice. <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> Little does he realize <laughs> that the automobile he is picking for Alice is in reality for himself. <laughs> well, now that I've reset the plot, I think I'll sing. I 
I got my Sunday best on, going strutting with my Lola Belle V. She's waiting for me, and I'll be there, I declare, with an hour to spare. And when we're walking arm in arm down the boulevard, oh golly, I'm proud. Have a look at that crowd. Hey, pop, call the cop for the traffic will stop, cause she's so, so, so adorable. My Laura Belle Lee is hard to find. My bundle of guys, yo, gee. So don't blame me for highfalutin, it got my horn out, and I'm a tootin', it bust each button when I'm out strutting with my Laura Belle Lee. That's why he is looking like a million. He's got that million dollar gold. He's stepping out. I've got my Sunday best on, going strutting with my Lola Belle Lee. She's waiting for me, and I'll be there, I declare, with an hour to spare. We pass the corner where the boys always hang around. They give her the eye as we're going by. That's fine, that's the sign that they know that she's mine. We all agree that she's adorable, your Lola Belle Lee. She's all that a girl might be. Yes, take my word, I got the best of it. One good look will tell the rest of it. I'll keep pitching cause I'll be hitching to my Laura Valley. Suppose Frankie doesn't like the car when he finds out it's for him and not for me. Honey, he's got to like it. He can't complain because he's picking it out himself. That's where my scheme is infallible. Infallible! <laughs> oh, Philip, watch that pretty mouth of yours. <laughs> Them $9 words are pouring out promiscuously. Whoop, there I go again. <laughs> What kind of a car he picks? He has such awful taste. I well, he's gonna. Imagine. Uh-oh, that must be him now. Hold it. Come in. Well, I got you an automobile, and it's the beauty. Come on outside. I'll show it to you. Where you see it, Alice? And I got a good deal on it too. Uh, Remley. Hmm. Did um, did you spend the whole three hundred? Well, not quite. I have a little change left over. <laughs> How much change? Two hundred seventy-five dollars. <laughs> You paid $25 for a car. What kind Don't of... knock it till you see it. Well, Alice, here's your car. Ain't she a knockout? Frankie. Notice how low slung she is. Frankie. You'll be proud to drive a sleek, streamlined job like this. Frankie. You... What? That's the pile of cans Phil put out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? I could have sworn I parked it here. Oh, there it is, over there. Where? The big pile. <laughs> the one leaning up against the garbage can. <laughs> the one with the celery, 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 celery sticking up is uh, the garbage can. <laughs> the program was transcribed for earlier broadcast. <laughs> Buy a wreck like that. What's the matter? Don't you like it? Oh, I guess it's all right, but isn't it kind of tired looking? Why is it lying down? It's relaxing. <laughs> when you get as old as that car, you'll sneak a short nap every chance you get to. <laughs> it's not an old car. It may not be brand new, but it's built better than the cars of today. It's got fine material in it. Just look at the eyes and glass in that windshield. <laughs> it comes with a lot of extras. Goggles, duster, and a spare set of candles for the headlights. Has it got a radio? Radio. It's got something better than that. It has a console with a three-way combination. Crystal set, gramophone, and stereopticon slot. <laughs> and these records come with the gramophone. Record? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me see them records. Yeah, here you are. Hmm. 
Nice set of cylinders. <laughs> Good tunes, too. Oh, Susanna, Camp Town Races. Here's a cute one. I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey, because I don't think this will make it. <laughs> Good tunes. Your feeble attempt at humor is quite pathetic. <laughs> Alice, aren't you happy with this car? Would you be happy with it? Would I? <laughs> I've dreamed of having a car like this all my life. <laughs> Would that I could afford it. <laughs> you couldst. <laughs> what? Remley, I got news for you. This is your car. I bought it for you, not Alice. For me? <laughs> you mean this... Beautiful car I picked out for Alice is the junk heap you bought for me? <laughs> there she lays, Rob, and she's all yours. <laughs> I ought to punch you right in the nose. Well, it's your own fault, Frankie. Bill gave you $300 to buy a car, but you had to chisel and buy one for $25. You made your bet, now you'll have to sleep in it. I don't feel bad enough she's got to come up with a corny expression like that. <laughs> I ain't going to keep this scrap pile. Well, that's all you're going to get. Now, if you don't like it, sell it to somebody else at a profit and buy yourself a better one. Who can I get to buy this heap? <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> Now he's stealing my character. <laughs> how low can a man get? Alice, I don't know how you live with this man. Are you in love with him? Of course I am. Ah, oh, you're just saying that. Come, girl, you can confide in me. What do you really think of him? Well, if you must know, I'll tell you. I like the lead to my song much better than I work alone. I don't know. <laughs> I'm as normal as blueberry pie No more a smart little girl with no heart I have found me a wonderful guy I am in a conventional dither With a conventional star in my eye And you will notice there's a lump in my throat When I speak of that wonderful guy I was driving as gay as a daisy in May A cliche coming I'm bromidic and bright as the moon. Happy night pouring light on the dew. She's as corny as Kansas in August. High as a flag on the 4th of July. If you'll excuse an expression I use. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I'm in love with a wonderful guy. She's as bright and as gay as the daisy in May. A cliche coming through. I'm as corny as Kansas in August, high as a flag on the 4th of July. If you'll excuse an expression I use, I'm in love, 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 I'm in love with a wonderful guy. I did was ask her what she thought of him. She could have said I like him, but no, she had to make a production out of it, going with two minutes song. Hey, look, Frankie, forget about that. Now, look, I've been thinking it over. Now, if you don't like the car, you don't have to keep it. Take it back to the guy you bought it from and get the money. I can't do that. The guy's no longer alive. <laughs> what are you talking about? You just bought the car from him an hour ago. I know. When I told him I'd take it, he dropped dead. <laughs> Well, anyway, he collapsed. He fell down. You know, Remley, come to think of it, now just quiet down a minute. This car doesn't look too bad. Well, maybe it does. Well, if it has a good motor, you can have the body fixed up and then and it'll be okay. Hey, fellas, bring... hey, what's that dead moose doing in the street? <laughs> Julius, this ain't no dead moose. My new automobile. This is an automobile? <laughs> 
this monstrosity? It's not a monstrosity. This automobile happens to be a family heirloom. My grandfather handed it down to my father. Well, old Butterfingers must have dropped it. (laughs) Although it's an heirloom and very dear to me, I'm going to sell this automobile. Are you kidding? Goodbye, this monstrosity. Stop calling it a monstrosity. I will if you stop calling it an automobile. (laughs) Look, kid. Even though this heirloom's worth a lot of money, I'm forced to sell it at a sacrifice. And since you're the dearest friend I got, I want you to have it. It's worth $3,000, but if you make me a reasonable offer, it's yours. You mean you're willing to sell me this valuable family heirloom? It's worth $3,000 and you're willing to let me have it at a sacrifice? That's right. What's your top offer? A dollar thirty-five. <laughs> You're offering me a dollar thirty-five for this beautiful car? I started too high, huh? <laughs> Look, kid, this is a good buy. It's got a wonderful engine. Do tell. What does it run on? Steam or battery? Now, don't be a wise guy. It's a modern engine. It's economical to run. It don't use much fuel. How much mileage can I get? Well, the last guy who had it got as much as fifty miles to one quart of wood. <laughs> You can use charcoal if you want. Just think you'll be the only kid at school with a charcoal broiled Essex. <laughs> you don't have to have a barbecue viewers, do you? <laughs> Look, son, this is a great buy. Come on, we'll take you for a ride. Julius, you start the motor. Okay, where's the crank? You don't need a crank for this car. Of course not. It's a cinch to start this motor. You see that slot, Julius, on the side of the hood? Yeah, what about it? Here's the key. Wind it up. <laughs> What are you trying to do? Kill my sale? No, this car has a self-starter. I'll show you. Something seems to be wrong with the motor. Choke it. Don't let it be strangled now. <laughs> I know where you got this. Jack Benny's Maxwell had pups. <laughs> you keep quiet, kid. I'll try it again. <laughs> hey, she started. Why is the motor coughing? Maybe it's got an allergy. (laughs) Now put it in gear and let's get going. Okay. (laughs) Fighting me. Fighting me. It won't go. Hey, Curly, it's moving. What happened? I must have kicked one of the galley slaves. (laughs) Come on, Julius. Quick, get in. Ain't you coming with us? No, thanks. Hey, Remley, we're picking up speed. Hey, it's all downhill. Hey, you better break it a little. Watch where you're driving. If you don't like the way I'm driving, you take the wheel. Frankie, put that wheel back on the shaft. Hey, we're heading for that store when to stop the car. Look out, duck, Remley, duck. something. Curly, are you all right? Oh, yeah. I always ride with my head between my knees. Right? <laughs> Remley, look at that mess you've made out of that store window. You've broken everything. In... Uh-oh. Hmm? Here comes the owner. Well, do you gentlemen wish to be waited on? <laughs> no, thank you. We're just browsing. <laughs> What's the idea of smashing in here like this? What happened? Well, we were window shopping and we overdid it. <laughs> 
You won't pay for this. I'll sue you for every penny you've got. I'll take you. Now, wait a minute, Mister. I don't want any trouble. It's not our fault. I'll pay for any damage we've done. Now, how much do I owe you? Fifteen hundred dollars, and you're not leaving here till I get the money. But I haven't got fifteen hundred dollars on me. Where am I going to get it? Don't worry, Curly. I'll get it. I feel partly responsible for this accident. I know a guy who'll let me have fifteen hundred bucks. Loan me a car so I can drive over and get it. All right, here are the keys. But hurry, Remley, will you? Hurry. Fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred. There you are, mister. Okay. Now you can go, Harris. Oh, Frankie, you're, you're a lifesaver. I don't know what I would have done if you didn't get that fifteen hundred bucks. That's all right, Curly. You know me. I'll do anything for a pal. What a day. What a day. <laughs> now, come on. Let's get in my car and go home. Where'd you park it? What's on that lot on the corner of 5th and Main? Well, let's go on over there and get... Hey, wait a minute. That's a used car lot. <laughs> of course. Where do you think I got the fifteen hundred bucks? Oh, <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, our Rexall family druggist has a customer. What's the name of that Rexall antacid you sold me a little while back? You must mean Bismarex, ma'am. Bismarex, that's it. I don't think I've ever found faster relief for acid indigestion. That's because Bismarex works like a team in a relay race. Like a relay race? <laughs> what on earth do you mean? Well, the carefully balanced ingredients in Bismarex vary in the time required for solubility so that each one works in sequence, like a four-man relay race. I get it. One ingredient starts in where the other leaves off. That's it. The first man or ingredient promptly relieves the heartburn that comes from food fermentation in the stomach. The next one races to neutralize hyperacidity. The third one eases gastric distress. And the Finnish man leaves a soothing, protective covering for irritated stomach membranes. No wonder Bismarex gives such fast relief. Well, ma'am, that kind of quality applies to all of Rexall's 2,000 or more drug products. And that's why 10,000 family druggists will tell you, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Phil, you were lucky to get your car back from that used car lot. I certainly wasn't. Remley, you ain't going to borrow it no more. You got your own car now. Anytime you want it, just go down to the grocery and take it out of the window. <laughs> I already got it out. I gave it to my aunt as a present. Your aunt don't drive. What's she going to do with it? She's having it wired. She's going to make a lamp out of it. <laughs> This program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Ruth Davis and Herb Biker. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Juliet was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Faye appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Any special tips for drugstore shoppers this week? You bet, ma'am. A good one. Rexall Ammoniated Tooth Powder. Many dental authorities believe that the use of ammoniated tooth powder means a decided lessening in tooth decay. And now, Rexall brings it to you at the unbelievably low price of only 39 cents for a three-ounce bottle. Why, that's less than I pay for ordinary tooth powder. And what's more, ma'am, Rexall ammoniated tooth powder is licensed by the University of Illinois Foundation and backed by the same uncompromising standards that apply to all of Rexall's 2,000 or more drug products. As for it, wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window, there's a family druggist inside who will tell you... You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Stay tuned for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately on NBC. NBC.